Wow. Are you serious? Happy New Year, everyone. That was the countdown to our Chill with Jim. Happy New Year. Beginning of 2021 episode. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, we would like to thank you all for coming out to this episode of Chill with Jim, where it is always, even in 2021, business up top and the pajamas at the bottom, my friends, we're still rocking it. So um, that's one thing that 2021 has not changed, but there are very, very uh, many other things that have changed. So I'm your host, Jim McCarthy, and I am the client advocate for Strix Louisiana. And my job is to make sure that our clients are set up with the best equipment, the best software, and the best IT solutions to help make sure that their businesses are running at optimal efficiency. We also have David DeArmond with us. Hey everybody, David DeArmond, owner of Strix LA. I appreciate you being out here. Looking forward to this one. All right. And so we want to tell you a little bit about Strix. And uh, at Strix, we believe that there's always a better, simpler, more secure way to do almost everything you could think of. So what that means for us is that we are constantly adapting and searching for the best solutions to make sure that we do have them in place for all of our clients. Now, we believe that part of this responsibility is to help educate our clients, uh, others out there in Facebook world, on the internet, um, educate them on some of the IT trends that are going on right now. We like to bring awareness to current security risks. We'll do in some productivity tips. Uh, we have special guests and uh, those are the types of things we do on Chill with Jim. And so we'd like to thank you again for coming out. And today it's a brand new year. And so, you know, I mean, what can we say about last year? Um, we just won't say much. How about a lot? You know, we just won't say we, a whole lot. That's probably best. <laughs> you know, so. I, I learned from, from watching Bambi that if, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. It's, it's uh, thumper wisdom there. That was very wise advice, and we're going to take it. So it's uh, no question, though, that 2020 was a bit chaotic, and it was across the, the globe. We had the pandemic, we had no traveling, we all had to stay at home during the mandate, civil unrest, we had some fun with the election. And um, so we were all very excited, I think, to bring in the new year. Um, but you know, through those trying times, there were a lot of lessons that we learned. And actually, there, I think they're lessons that we can use to make ourselves and our businesses and our lives just uh, a little better in the future, uh, more productive. You know, it changed the way that businesses operate. It changed the ways that we as employees work for those businesses. So what it's led to is a lot of innovations and very creative, like adaptive ways to maximize productivity in these new times. So, you know, um, I think, what did I say? Like some of the, the best times and the, the, the best times to start is just to be pushed in, right? And, uh, you know, like, what did I say? You're thrown in the deep. Yeah, the throw pool. them into the deep. So we were definitely thrown in to the pool, but we, we've learned quite a bit um, from the big push. So what we'd like to go over today is we're just going to be talking some of the new trends of productivity that are going to be used for this year. We're going to talk about some of those ideas. Um, it's going to relate to a lot of what we have learned uh, from the past year. Uh, but there was a, you know, every year there's changes and, and I think business ideas and, and plans and growth are, you know, always plan for some change, but they don't quite plan for as drastic as a change as we had um, to everything. So, you know, we'll be looking at some of the new and, and innovative ways that people have come up with to make 2021 a new and productive, super 
happy, amazing, ultimate year. Um, so we wanted to go over some of those. Uh, you know, David, I don't know if there's anything that you've noticed right off when I bring up the topic. Um, what was one thing that, you know, you've, what was one of the experiences that you've learned from um, during the pandemic where it kind of opened your eyes to a new, uh, innovative, maybe adaptive way of doing things? Could be anything, personal or business. Yeah, well, I, I, I think uh, personally, what, what I've seen in business is just a willingness to uh, adopt new things with, with businesses. I, and, and I say new things, most, most of what is being used today has been out for a while. Uh, so what am I talking about? I, I'm talking about Slack and Teams and those sorts of, of applications that they were around but now they're being relied on like that, that it, it is pivotal, pivotal to the operations of a business to have those applications uh, running and working. And so just with people working remote and not in the same office where you can stop and, you know, uh, yell across the cubicle or walk down the hall or whatever it is, uh, Teams and Slack has really become the, the new point. Of, uh, of conversation and, and getting things done. So to me, that, that's kind of the, the biggest thing. We've been using it for a while, um, but we, we rely on it even more now. And, and what I'm seeing is just people are just okay with it now. Before, ah, I don't, I don't want to do that. You know, I, got, I can talk to them right here. Now people are like, eh, that's pretty cool. I, I like that. Yeah. So that's a, that's a great point. And um, I just wanted to kind of get some feedback from others out there of, of maybe some of the things that they've noticed. Um, you know, we're going to touch on some of those subjects, but, you know, just think about it before we dive in, like, have there been some, maybe some aha, we like to say ahas in our, our, uh, in our meeting. So like some ahas you've had along the way that, that would have probably never happened if we weren't put in that situation. So those are some good things to look back at and uh, to learn from. So, you know, like David talked about, but one of the things it really did was it, it enabled the workforce to be remote. So before we had quite a few people that were kind of remote, maybe not remote, or had mostly fully remote capabilities. Um, and what the first half of 2020 did was because it was so very reactive and none of us really, you know, none of those companies had, had planned for it, um, it became crucial for companies to get a remote solution in place. So most companies were yeah. struggling, you know, at the beginning, you look at it, they were struggling to find work from home equipment because everything was selling out because everybody's like, I need a webcam, I need a laptop. Um, you know, the Russian, the companies were rushing to enable remote access for all of their, their office workers, um, however that needed to be done. And then a lot of the, the cloud solutions needed to be put into place, or like David said, if they weren't, our, if they were already in place, holy cow, now we're, now that's all, that's all we use, or that's 90% of what we use when it used to be like 40%, 50%. So, um, you know, all this is going on. It's, it's starting to create this momentum of, of a remote workforce across, you know, multiple um, areas, not just IT, but it, it pushed it into every kind of work environment you could imagine. So, you know, you start to think about when we first got put in, there's, you know, who's picking up the, the mail from the office? Um, how do we do scanning? Because I used to scan invoices from the, the, the copier in the copier room. And when that was done, I would just use the copier at my desk. So now how do I, how do, I do that at home? Um, you know, we used to collaborate a lot on projects in person. Now we're not having our weekly meeting in person and it, it's just like, how, how are we gonna get that same interaction and feedback over the video? Uh, these are all like things that we've had to accomplish along the way because we just had to, um, which leads to better ways of doing it. Um, I think there are still quite a few companies out there that are a little bit of a work in progress when it comes to implementing um, 
a fully remote workforce and operations, but most of us with a reaction period had to come up with some solutions. So this gave a huge surge and, and everybody trying to find the best way to enable a, work, uh, a remote workforce, um, which was a great push because I think it was a, something I know as IT providers, it was always a tough conversation or to have technology provide because it's you're it's like insurance almost you're you're kind of you're selling them something for the future you know well and the next we see this trending towards the future we really need to get you into the cloud environment because it's it's gonna everybody's just going that way we see and and maybe a year you know we'd have these conversations people like well I like the way things work um, and we get comfortable but this one COVID really didn't care too much about our comfortability so we just had to adapt and uh which leads into really our next topic here which is better simpler more secure home offices so you're going to see a big trend this year is going to be how do we maximize our productivity at home how do we get our employees to be the most efficient when they are at home Let's get them the right equipment. Um, so most estimations right now are saying that about half or about double the amount of people will be working remotely in 2021. So as people adjust to permanently working from home, they're going to start investing in home offices that work, you know, that work best for them. It's very important to make it a customizable to or like um, beneficial to what you want in your home office. Um, and now with this huge surge, there are, there's surge, there's, there's all these new resources out there. There's new equipment that's safer, more secure. Like we're going to, I think this is going to be a huge push towards routers and laptops needing to be more secure. Uh, and, and I want to, you know, emphasize this like importance of protecting your home office because we did have a whole entire episode about the routers and um and that's when i think that is just a it's a need that we all need where more and more companies will start to provide that solution making it easier to have a secure office and i, I don't know david if you you can if you've seen anything come out recently i know a lot of people are talking about it and talking about releasing new um new protocols for their equipment that are going in homes. Um, yeah, I, I, I know what what we're seeing on on our end from from the technology provider standpoint, the the equipment that we typically use, uh, we use up level systems equipment for networking in a lot of places, but we're seeing the same thing with with Cisco, with the um, with the other providers that 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 create network equipment, they're building these small devices that you can put at your house and they're lowering the price on it there. And, and it's, it's just intended to handle a, a home office like you're, like you're talking about. They're really starting to roll these out. They, they know, okay, that the, the work from home strategy is going to stick around. It's, it's growing. Uh, I, I heard a statistic that 90% of the people that are working from home right now want to keep working from home. That that's a huge number. It sounds a little high to me, but I, I don't know. I, I I can't say in in my experience and talking to people that it's not true. Um, and and so what I expect to to see are a lot of these devices that are business class. So you you may get some stuff on the consumer side but it's really going to be the business class equipment that the cost is lowered and employers start putting them in employees homes it, it's it's um it's at a price point that justifies being able to put it in everyone's home and it it creates a secure connection with company uh company resources and the end user at home yeah yeah i think that now that the reactionary period we spoke about is is mostly ended you're looking at more of the vendors and all of the digital solutions all of these work from home equipment providers they're going to start to provide more and more options to make that fully remote 
workforce capable. You know, they, they say they, they can see that there's a huge, uh, what is it, blue water, there's blue water there. So yeah. there's huge opportunity in that. Um, and so that's going to evolve our home offices into, you know, better, simpler, more secure. We're all going to have, uh, you know, I think it's going to be more necessary to have a capable laptop for everybody that's working, you know, um, before they could have their desktop at work, at the office. And now they could go home, maybe use their personal laptop just to hop in remote into their computer at work. Well, what we saw is that that equipment wasn't up to, to, um, qual to high enough standards to perform. So a lot of, you know, you have a home computer, you're gonna, you're gonna rock that thing for 10 years if you can, <laughs> because it's just your home computer. But at work, you, most people are on a you know, three to four year schedule where they're updating their equipment. So um, this is gonna push people to buy nicer equipment. Maybe the maybe your employees or, or employers will help provide some of this equipment. Um, those will be some big questions, I think, coming up this year. Yeah, I, I, I think you'll see as as companies start replacing computers and and you know the computers for for an office environment are on a three four year. Uh, cycle. It, it, if you want to keep them running well, you, you have to replace them every every four years or so. Um, I, I, I think you'll see as as employers are replacing those computers, they're going to go ahead and and get that laptop. Uh, it, it's flexible, so you can you can put it at home, you can put it at work, you can get a docking station at at each location, so that you can have a full setup no matter where you go. Um, if you go into the office, you plug in. You're set up. You get to work. If you're at home, you plug in. You're set up. You get to work. It, it provides that that flexibility, and and the cost is is not significantly more than getting that desktop. So I think you'll see a lot of, of movement toward laptops and just the the flexibility there. Yep. Yep. So all these things are going to lead to our you know all of us having the tools we need to be more productive in this in this new age. So uh, we're looking at another another hot uh, kind of another new productivity trend that we're going to need to track and just really um, accept and embrace. I think that's a good word is there's going to be more and more video digital collaboration. So Zoom and other virtual meeting tools, you know, that make collaborating collaborating with your team easy. Um, they're they're now they're in use all the time. Um, they're going to be, which again kind of pushes the market to provide better and better solutions. So as more people get more confident with the video meetings, collaborating collaborating with um, with their team, uh, and it will be a lot easier with all of the new Zoom or video capabilities that we have, um, this is going to be something that I think a lot of us kind of get that Zoom fatigue where we're like, man, I just, I don't like these video meetings and uh Well, um, this year, I think we're gonna see that the, the people who really embrace the digital environments, so, digital video meetings, uh, collaborating on Teams or Skype, um, all of these, I think the companies that embrace it are gonna just have a little bit easier uh, time this year because so many people, are, the, now that's just how they work. So now, I've, now Skype is how they communicate or Teams, that's the only way that they do team uh, or a, a project together now is through Teams, um, which allows you to do video meetings. So, you know, all of these things, um, I think are gonna become more and more just kind of the way we do things. Like at the beginning, everybody, no one really wanted to text anyone, you know? I didn't want to text anyone on my phone. This is, this, but now, what does it switch to? Everybody wants to text. I'm just gonna text your business. Uh, about my business. Oh, that's kind of weird. Back in the day, that was totally, or not back in the day, back not too long ago, that was like, you're doing what? You're texting yeah, another that's... business, asking them for what? 
a, a year ago that that was what are you doing 12 months later that's the expectation right yep yep so i think that's what kind of has happened here with the, the the video meetings and all of that and the teams collaboration slack uh, you know all of these things that people were a little hesitant about they've gotten quite used to so we're gonna have to embrace them uh another thing is this year you're gonna have to go all in for ai and you know art artificial intelligence it makes life a lot easier most of the time for us so i think more and more people will start to again embrace this technology but to also start to take advantage of of what ai can offer um there's the, the i'm not sure how candace is going to feel about that one <laughs> well things like being a mom i think are still going to be relied upon as as a human being no be ai involved and in the that. robot killed the kid I'm saying no, we wouldn't. We wouldn't get the robot involved in the. In the okay, mind. if they can do the dishes, and they can do the laundry, <laughs> they can. Well, I don't have diapers anymore, but they can do accidents. You know, they just yeah, that they can't but, kill anyone. They're 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 intelligent. You know, at, at some point, do they decide we're not going to do this oh, anymore? <laughs> this is then so they're funny. just going to want to do the fun stuff. <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> or just take over our house. Smart homes. And the, and the AI I was talking about, I didn't even, to, totally didn't even relate to like robots or anything in my That's mind. That. Every <laughs> time y'all say that, all I think is the movie I Robot and I see Will Smith just running for his life. Yeah. Uh, it's a good movie. <laughs> good book. If you do that sort of thing. <laughs> Oh, you, so, you were talking about actual application of artificial intelligence. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and the AI is, uh, so AI is involved in quite a few things that maybe you don't uh, realize in our day-to-day -day already, um, but it helps analyze. It does a lot of an analysis. It, it's, it's already kind of put into quite a few of the devices out there on the technology market right now. Um, but, you know, in the AI tools today, are finally getting advanced enough to where they're like normal people usually user friendly and helpful. So like we're, we're you don't have to be a super rocket science genius to know how to work the AI functionality or to write or to produce re the results you want from an AI um, implemented solution. So so that's that's something that's really going to be fun to watch. I, I'm with Candice a little bit. It is. It is intimidating some of the things that they're capable of doing, but um, I, am, I embrace our, <laughs> our artificial intelligence overlords. It, it all starts out fun in games though. Like anything else, and somebody loses an eye or takes <laughs> over the world. <laughs> it's trickery. <laughs> I'm not even talking on a phone right now. That's, that's how serious and scared I am. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just using a really loud <laughs> megaphone that it's reaching all the way to David's mic. That's what's happening. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's you, how you, you know, can avoid it. We we we've seen uh, Microsoft has has really embraced, and really all all of the big manufacturers they they really embraced artificial intelligence. Uh, Apple has embraced it. Um, Google, of course, and and I I don't know if you guys have seen it. If you're on Office 365 or Microsoft 365, uh, they, they have the Cortana briefings now. So, so of course, Cortana is, is their, um, their, their voice that, that will do voice recognition with you to, to do commands like Alexa or, or whatever. Um, but you, now you get emails and it's, it's a Cortana briefing and it, it, it's looking through all of your emails as you send them back and forth. And it's looking for those things that are probably important to you, things that you're probably gonna need to take care of today. And it sends you an email every morning and says, look, looks like this is what is uh, is on your plate for today. Make sure you get these things taken care of. Yeah. You didn't prompt it. It's just it's going through and it's figuring out based on language and everything else that uh, it looks like this. These, this is what your your day needs to look like today. <laughs> Very interesting and sometimes creepy feeling uh 
but yeah, it's real. It, it's, it's real. It's, it's happening. It's helping a lot of companies gain an advantage in the market. Um, they're, they're doing a lot of automation, enhancing, it enhances decision-making and it's going to improve the overall product productivity of most of their solutions in place. So a lot of these companies out there that are embracing it are getting that kind of that leg up. Um, you know, they can do things like write a sim simple algorithm that enhances your reporting, kind of like I talked about before. Um, or you could, you know, right now they can do a totally customized uh, AI cloud-based solution to help you really kind of perform whatever you'd like throughout your department. Um, like I said earlier, if you know how to kind of tell it what you need, it starts to learn how to go and get it. Um, and so it's just, it's becoming more and more. And I, you know, the food for thought here is like, and I, I was ask, uh, ask the, one of you guys, what, you know, if you had two companies, and Candace throws in a wrench here, because I know she's going to say the opposite answer I want. But if, if you had two, uh, had to choose between hiring two companies, and one of them was using AI, and one of them was not uh, using AI. But you know everything else given in that contract or, or hiring that company was the same. You know, would you go with a company that's utilizing a tool like AI to help them run their business, or would you just go with the guys who are not using AI? And I, I think if you think about if everything else is the same, why not go with the advancements you're going to get from using a company that embraces AI. I'll accept for Candace. What would she probably the happen is David would say, let's do it. And I would say, you, you said leg up. It's leg up until the leg is off. Like <laughs> robot chopping the leg off, oh. you know, talking to you through computer to chop. So, um, something's going to happen bad. So I'm going to say no AI. And then he's going to say, but it's the best business decision. That's how that would go. And ultimately, we'd probably yeah, go that, ahead and go with it because it is best for business. I, I, I think it's always about balance. I mean, what, what you see so far from AI is that it, it does a good job. It, it gets through a lot of information very quickly. And we're, we're in the information age today. We are flooded with information. It's more than we as humans can handle very well. I, I don't see that artificial intelligence makes the best decisions necessarily yet. It, it's very good at, at processing information. Um, but you can you can still tell you know if if you're on a website talking to a, an AI chatbot or something like that, you can tell they're they're not as good as as a well trained human. Um, so so I I think you know if, if I'm looking at those two companies, I'm really looking for a good balance. A, a company that just depends on AI and that's that's all they, that they look at and they're you know they're just they're trying technology technology and and it's it's all AI and we have two people, but we've got all this AI that may be out of balance. But the same thing if, if you have a company that says, uh, you know, we, we've got a thousand people and we have zero automation and zero AI. I'm like, you're not very efficient. And so I'm not sure you're the best solution. Okay. That is, that is a great point considering our company and how we love being personable. I think for me, it would depend on how much control you have over the AI and how detailed you could get with it. That makes sense. Because mm -hmm. if you can, if you can change it up to make it sound more personable, which it seems to be getting better and better and make it say cool little things or jokes or this or that, or just interact better then you know, so, yeah, I think it, so you, yeah, like you, David said, balance. Yeah. You're looking, you're looking for AI to inform decisions, not make decisions. It's kind of the, the way that I look at it. Okay. Um, it, it, it AI can, at, at this point, AI really helps you narrow things down and maybe look at things that, that you would have missed and helps inform your decision. But I, it, I, I don't think we're to the point, and, and that's going to continue to grow. I don't think we're to the point where AI is making all of the decisions. Yeah, I agree. And so that'll be next and, year. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be mid, uh, that'll be March. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, 
so uh so that's that's something that that's we're going to look at being more and more used this year uh i like the balance um concept of 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 course we don't want one that's all or none um but i guess a, another way to look at it would be is if if you're trying to promote your business if you are able to highlight maybe an ai technology that you use that gives you that allows your client to have a you know a better situation i think it gives you kind of that advantage if, if it's the right thing um but yeah no we want the balance there with everything you know uh and that's always the hard thing is, is balance so um we, we we've seen a a movement towards a high demand for on-demand videos so what's cool about this is you think about there's all these messages that now you can pre-record for your colleagues or your clients and shoot them out kind of when you want you can do that with email automation um, now a lot of companies are taking advantage of the screen recording content um, and how-to videos for their clients and employees because again i more and more people are embracing digital as a general because they have to be digital <laughs> so so it's like oh hey this uh, now i'm you know we've all been in it a little bit more we're all comfortable so pulling up a uh or watching a, a how-to video to do something is oh well this seems a little more familiar to me this isn't such a shock or um if we record a screen uh, we record our screen, kind of um, sharing it with our clients on how to get through something, how to navigate something. It's much more accepted as before. I think they always kind of wanted to have either someone show them in person or maybe someone interactive and to inter interact with. Now we're we're a little more used to where, okay, yeah, I think I'm going to have to do the digital solution or I'm going to have to look at a digital um Thing, uh, digital tool to help me solve my problem. Uh, and yeah, I know for, for us, especially, and, and it's true for a, a lot of industries, we're in tech support. And so we, we used to, if you want to show somebody how to do something, you, you maybe go to their office and you work with them and show them how to do that. Well, it, it now the office is closed or it's in quarantine or you're in quarantine, you can't stop working. And so, yeah, you, you use those those screen recording capabilities um, that, again, it, this stuff has been around for a while, mm -hmm. um, but now now you just you have to use it a little bit more. And and so, you, you, you'll I, I think you'll continue to to see that where people are are learning those programs and getting comfortable with those programs, and and as that happens you'll use it even more. Um, and, and so expect to see that more, expect to use that more. Yep. Yeah. And, and I think it's, it's going to be a great way for all of us to kind of uh, mess, uh, interact with all of our clients or our customers, our family, you know, anything like this. If, if now that that is, is so much more acceptable, we can do things like send them a quick pre-recorded message or video or a how to screen recording and then people are like oh okay he's not just not taking my call uh so look for embracing that in 2021 um we also have you know everything's moving to the cloud whether you like it or not uh we didn't have a choice so uh there you <laughs> a lot of the arguments of you know we don't want to change our operations uh the cloud isn't as secure as we like. Uh, we can't afford the time it takes to put the project into place. Well, COVID-19 knocked out all of those uh, reasons. So, um, and, it, and it really just pushed all of us into using more and more cloud solutions. Um, those that weren't in the cloud before COVID most likely felt some pain along the way, um, lost some employee productivity. They probably had a decent amount of, of downtime. They had to purchase new equipment that we talked about the 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 scramble for laptops um everybody needed in march um and you know as a result i think a lot of companies were hit hard financially so this this opens up the door to 
we need a cloud solution because our on-premises solution isn't working anymore. No one's at the office. Um, or we can't, you know, we, we need to be able to do this remotely because what we used to do is no longer applicable. And, and all, at least I didn't see it in our employee handbook. And I looked very, very close and read it paid word for word. But most of them don't have a global pandemic section in there telling us how to, to navigate all of, all of these new ways of doing things. The, yeah. the business, our business plans, they, they, they plan for a lot in the future, but they probably didn't plan for the global pandemic. So, oh my gosh. So now we're looking at, we had to put these cloud solutions into place, but now you can pick out the ones you like. Now you can find the ones that are best for you. Before it was like, hey, go and go and grab what you want. But now everybody's priority is to find the best digital. A lot of people's priorities find the best digital solution, and then quickly put the cloud resource into place. And and the migration is is happening more and more. Yeah, I, you know, I I think a lot of people when 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 COVID started. Uh, we thought it was going to be temporary. I, I think the first lockdowns, they were like six week lockdowns, right? And, and we were going to flatten the curve and, and then we'll go back to life as normal. Uh, well, it, here we are uh, coming up on, on almost a year later and we're looking at COVID mutations and extended lockdowns and another hundred days. And so it, it's really extending. And, and I think businesses are understanding this is the new normal. And so you're going to have to embrace those those cloud solutions. It's not something that you can put off for long enough uh, until we return to normal, because this is normal now. And so you, you've you've got to in place uh, or embrace those uh, those solutions that allow you to to simply and securely work from wherever you may be. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 been a great push, and I think we're all in a much better spot for the coming year because of what, because we had to put these into place. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to finish up with just, we've, we've found some, you know, so we've learned a lot about how we can better, better ourselves with efficiency, productivity for the, what David calls the new norm, which I, I agree. Um, I think a lot of this is gonna stick around for quite a while. Um, but along the way, uh, guess what we found as well as we found some new ways to recharge ourselves to help us as individuals be productive. So, you know, the work from home mandate, it meant, you know, that drive to work, you're no longer listening to your favorite music or kind of having that introspective reflection. Um, you're not listening to your favorite uh, podcast. Uh, and now that you're not at work, you're not sitting at the the water cooler i always thought that was so funny who has a water cooler um the water fountain and uh talking with your your friends at work or your coworkers at work so a lot of those things that kind of gave us a little recharge during the day um or before the day those things went away because or that the ones that we had in place went away because we're not going to the office anymore um so what it gave rise to was people coming up with more, more creative ways to kind of take a little mini break or a micro break as they call them and recharge a little bit so they can still be productive for the rest of their day. Or maybe they do it first time in the you know, first thing in the morning. So break time activities like soaking up some sun in your backyard, maybe on your lunch, maybe eating your lunch out there, um, cuddling your pet, uh, reading a chapter of a book, uh, listening to a podcast, taking a short walk, you know, all of these things, they will actually, so they're, they're rising right now in popularity as people get more familiar with working from home. They're learning that, yeah, hey, a, a quick 10 minutes, 15 minutes here will actually help improve my attitude and actually help, help my efficiency. Um, so the rise in this popularity of these types of activities is actually given a rise to what businesses are seeing with the productivity. So, you know, we have a, a work, remote workforce that is a lot more, uh, a little more satisfied or happy, I guess. They're, they're, they're taking yeah. some more things, some self-care, some, you have a little more time to do your personal things, you know, to, to make sure you're 
but sharpening the blade, sharpening the saw. Yeah, I, I, I think a, a lot of companies embrace this, especially, you know, the, the some of the larger companies, they embrace this previously, and they tried to create the work environment to allow that sort of, of um, activity. So, you know, you, you see a, a lot of, of companies with, with these, these game rooms almost, they got pool or they have a nice outside area where you can go and walk around and, and they really tried to embrace it at work. At, at home, it, it's much easier to do. And, and if, if, you, if you take a little while and go walk and read a book or, or something like you're talking about, if you did that at work, you'd probably end up, you know, the boss is looking at you like, hey, what yeah. are you doing? You're, you're on work time. But if if you're at home, you can kind of get away uh, uh, away with that, and then you, you 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 maybe work a little bit later or get in a little bit earlier. We're, we're seeing with with so many parents having to uh, to do homeschool um, that that maybe they don't they, they they really they don't work during normal business hours, so they may work early and late. But like you said, the the productivity is actually increasing, and and I, I think that's been a big surprise to a lot of businesses that that you grant people that that freedom and set the expectation of what needs to be done, and in general the employees are going to get it done, and, and it it really shows you as the employer who's here to do their to do their job and to be a part of the company versus who's here to to sit around and collect a paycheck because can't get away with that anymore uh, sitting around to, to collect a paycheck it, it, it's it's hard to to pretend you're busy when no one's watching so now companies are they're they're looking at the numbers and you know this is probably another trend we're, we're going to see in the future is looking at the numbers and wait a minute you're i thought you were a great employee you were always working but i don't see that you're producing anything and and on the other hand you know Oh, you, you you kept running out to go do this and go do that, or or take a phone call, and yet you're you're producing so much more. So I, I, I think we'll see that shift in in how how employers evaluate their employees. Yeah, yeah, and then you know they they talk about with this comes like a there's there's some kind of some three major boosts that you're seeing um, and how what people look for in a job. So. You know, the effects of a positive workforce environment is a huge one that, that they're saying, it, you know, they're asking people, what do they want where they're working? What, what are they looking for in their new job? And, you know, um, the positive workplace environment is huge. And the reasons they, a lot of them think that the workplace as environment is, is more positive, a flexible schedule, spending time with their family, ability to travel, the um, work from home solution, avoid office politics, exercise regularly. These are all things that our people are saying are like reasons that they um, enjoy the, the work environment, the trends that, that are going on. And so if you think about it, all of those things kind of relate in some way to being work from home solutions. So flexible schedule, spending your time with the family, ability to travel, you know, uh, all of these things, avoiding the office politics, these are all things that are going to boost people's productivity because it's boosting what they their their engagement at work, what they like about work, their enjoyment at work. So um, I think that's going to be something that, you know, we're going to see continue to rise. So new, I think companies are going to definitely have to adapt um, to allow their employees to take part in these activities to give them that flexible schedule um, and, and to continue to work from home. Like the 90%, David, that's huge. 90% of people want to stay working at home. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, like, like I said, I'm, I'm surprised to, to hear that number, but I'm thinking back to conversations that I've had with, with people and talk to them about working from home and and I'd say it's it's only one in ten that's like I really want to get back to the office uh the the rest I, I think have have kind of gotten used to being at home and and there's some some things that they don't want to give up um in 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 that the flexibility and just maybe being able to see the family more or something like that so I 
I, I, I guess it's accurate. I, I haven't uh, I haven't looked at the at the the source numbers there. Yeah, I, I would agree with a nine out of ten. Well, a lot of people yeah. too started out. A lot of people started out like like Jim. Remember how you were kind of freaked out a little bit about working from home because you were yes. more one of those you needed the drive, you needed that time, you needed to get in the zone, put your clothes on. <laughs> And I was kind of worried because I was like, okay, if corn on, is Jim going to be okay working at home? And you swapped, you did it a complete about face. So I think a lot followed that same path as well and thought that it was going to be a lot more hard for them to get into the routine at home and be productive at home. And then figuring, I, this, this is cool. I like yeah, this. I can yeah. get a lot more done. Yeah. And just have your, your business up top and your pajamas on the bottom. <laughs> uh, that's so funny because David, think about your situation. Your your home office is up top. So that's your business up top. And pajamas, all of the bottom yeah. is your pajama, the relaxed pajama. Yeah, atmosphere. pretty much when 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 I when I step down from the office here, I'm just going to sleep. <laughs> Uh, really. So think about those, those new ways you can relax, refresh yourself um, because they're going to be good for you. And um, those are the, the type of things that uh, will make this year a little bit more um, fun. We're learning all about how this goes, how all of us can do working from home. Like, I, like they said about me, I, I really was not too excited about it. Um, but I adapted and now it's, it's, there's a lot of blessings. There's a lot of, um, positive things we can get out of this. And so I hope some of those tips will help you plan some of your goals and help you stay productive, um, and help, I mean, your businesses, maybe your lives, maybe others just share these ideas with, with people. I do believe these are things that are going to, um, really push us forward this year. And good. that's what I got. Yeah, I don't know if you had anything else, any other tips you thought of? No, I, I mean, if, if you're looking at maybe some specific technologies, I, I think you'll see just an increased reliance on the applications that, that you had in place. So when we're looking at, at CRMs, like your customer relationship management, um, I, I know for most businesses, that's a bit of a pain point and you don't really want to go enter all that information in the CRM. Um, I, I, you know, I, I can just say, hey, Jim, blah, 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 blah. And, and it's, it's done. And, and now that's not as easy. So it, it probably forces you to use something like a CRM because you, you, you need that communication back and forth uh, within a system. Um, I'd, I'd say probably a little bit more with voice over IP as well. Um, so, you know, we, we see a lot of, a lot of companies are, are still using uh, premises based phones and, and that on the technical side that can still be voice over IP, but, but the, the voice over IP solutions, uh, your, your ring centrals, your, your Vonage, your next to all of these that allow you to, to get your business phone calls on your cell phone and really separate business phone numbers, business calls and, and personal phone numbers and personal phone calls. I, I think you're gonna continue to see more people uh, embrace that as those contracts end for, for on-premise phone systems. Uh, you're gonna see people adopt the, the, the flexible phone systems. And I, I think that's what we're gonna see more and more and more is just the adoption of, of flexible solutions. Everything's gonna have to be flexible because we, we don't know, no one really is on firm footing right now. There, there's a lot changing. And so we don't know what tomorrow is gonna look like. Um, so we need solutions that, that allow us to, to adapt and adjust on, on a very rapid basis. Yeah, yeah. So welcome to the new year. I, I mean, this has been really exciting to, to kind of think about. And the reflection is always good because it, it does, it leads you to those things that you might not have um, realized before. You know, you in the moment, it's really tough and it's hard. And then 
you might not think about it for a little while because you don't want to remember that stuff. And then, and then you get to the end of the year and you look back and you're like, oh, you know what? I wouldn't have been able to do this or implement this or advance myself here if this wouldn't have happened. So that's why that reflection is very important. And I think coming up with sticking with the, the things that are working for um, trends of productivity and what, what the market's doing are going to help us all stay uh, competitive with all of our um, competition out there. So um, thank you all for joining me and happy new year. Uh, David, what do we have on the slate for next week? Well, we're going to be talking about some more trends. So, you know, this is this is January of 2021. We, we got to take a step back and, and look at what can we expect uh, through the new year. Today, we talked about productivity. Next week, we're going to get back to our roots a little bit on the cyber threats. So what are the biggest cyber threats of, of 2021? Probably going to be a little uh a little overlap here with with work from home type of stuff, but uh, we've seen some very big hacks in the last uh, few weeks here, and I think you're going to see more of them. We'll talk more about that next week. Yep, and if you see right behind me, I forgot to mention it earlier, but you know I I am actually going into the future to figure out these trends. So I hope you guys appreciate it. That's we had smart. the Maya Delorium. We had, I mean, I put it on my company card without asking permission. <laughs> but so I've been traveling to the future to really understand what we need to do. Um, so I just wanted to uh, let you guys know that it is totally legit. And from the future. That, that's the actual, that, that's a real time traveling DeLorean back there. Yeah. I know this guy named- That's Doc. awesome. Emmett, Doc. <laughs> Emmett Brown. All right. Well, we will see you next week. I'll do some time traveling. I'll come back with some of those big security threats we're looking at. Uh, again, what that'll do is it'll help us prepare for those and make sure that we do have something in place to protect us from that, or we're thinking about putting something into place. So we look forward to seeing you next week. Same chill time, same chill network. Thank you for joining us.